Hello, I'm Christine McLeod. I'm a weaver at Weaver's Cottage in Kilbarkin, a National Trust for Scotland property. I'm going to show you how to set up a spinning wheel. Now, this spinning wheel is widely available. It's the most common form of, of spinning wheel. And what we've got here is the wheel, which is attached to this, which is called a maiden. And the maiden is going to twist round, and you notice that there are hooks on the maiden. Now, it's turned using the foot pedal, like so. Now, before you start spinning, it's really important to just learn that technique. It's just try and get that speed going, a constant speed going, and you're turning the wheel clockwise. The next stage that we're going to do is we're going to put the bobbin into the, the spinning wheel. So what we have to do with, with this end here, loosen it off, take it out and hold this with your left hand and insert the bobbin. And we're going to attach this back on so that the spoke goes through the hole. The next important stage is to set up the tension. Now this is called a Scots tension. And basically all it is is a bit of string with a spring on the end. Now the Scots tensioner will go over the groove in the bobbin, round the top and hook it on to the left hand side. The role of the, the, the Scots tensioner is just so that you can effectively adjust things when you're actually spinning. And the method of adjustment is here is this knob here. This, the tension can be adjusted by twisting this handle here. The next stage is to set up the, the bobbin. Here's the bobbin. Just make sure there's a wee bit of yarn on it. Just to, it's wound round the bobbin itself and you've got a bit free. We then take the yarn and just hook it over, take it down through the four and cross it over like that. Spinning wheels should come with their own little hooks, but if they don't, anything, a bent pin, which is the, is the case here, can be used as a hook, but this is an essential piece of equipment and you'll use this frequently. Take the hook and put it through the, the orifice here and try and maneuver it so that you can see the hook through the hole, okay? And what we're going to do now is we're going to put the wool through the hook. So you have to catch the wool. And pull it through. The setup's now complete and you're ready to start spinning. And that's how to set up a spinning wheel. In this film I'm going to show you how to use a spinning wheel. And what I've got here is the Spinning wheel set up, ready for use. The yarn is coming from the bobbin, it's coming over the hooks, through the orifice, and is ready to start. The first thing to do is to set up the spinning wheel, and if you'd like more information on this, if you just look at my, my video on how to set up a spinning wheel. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to explain how to spin. So I've got the yarn on here, and what we need to do is join the fleece onto the yarn. So what I'd recommend is grip the last piece of yarn very tightly between your finger and thumb and just loosen off the fibres slightly. Take your next piece of fleece and place it on like so and just grip a wee bit, just a wee bit there. And then we're going to spin the wheel. Now you should have learned to master how to spin the wheel by now. So you might need to practice a few times just to, to feel confident about spinning the wheel before you start using both your feet and your hands. But what I'm now doing is I'm essentially gripping between finger and thumb quite tightly and allowing the twist to come in to the wool and then sliding my finger down and pushing it towards the bobbin. 
again slide down. Now this is something that will take quite a bit of practice and don't worry that if you get it wrong um, a number of times it does take quite a while before you become relaxed enough to do this but just remember to grip as much as you can, feel the twist going in and then draw with your right hand the yarn, the, the fleece out and this is how to use a spinning wheel. In this film I'm going to show you how to ply wool and for this I need to use a lazy kate. Um, this is a piece of equipment here, again commonly available on the internet. This can ply three bobbins together but we're only going to ply two at this moment in time. We've got two bobbins here with the yarn on and I'll just show you how to attach them onto the, the lazy kate. I'm now going to ply two threads of yarn together. What I'm going to do is ply two threads together. So what I have is bobbin already set up with some yarn on here and it's all fed through the orifice. I'll just hook it on top here. Start pedalling the wheel. Now, in terms of plying, the important thing is to spin backwards. So these two bobbins, when you're, you're, you're doing a single ply, you're always spinning in a clockwise direction. But when you're plying, it's an anti-clockwise direction. So just remember that when you're, before you set off, is to adjust the wheel to an anti-clockwise direction and tread off. Now you can feel the spin of the twist in the yarn and all you're going to do is then join the three on, so the two on. So just bring the yarn up and just let it feed through onto the bobbin. And you see the twist. Now the first few inches just a little wee bit of adjustment, tighten up and then keep spinning. And it's just the same technique but this time what you're doing is you're allowing a bigger gap between your fingers and just feeding it through. Now I've just stopped the spinning wheel so that you can see the plied wool here. Now as you're spinning to work down the bobbin then you're just moving down, spinning a bit, moving down, spinning, and so on and so on, and work your way back up again until your bobbin is full. And that's how to ply wool. What I'm doing now is I'm spinning flax, and I'm gonna tell you a wee bit about the spinning of flax and how it differs from spinning of wool. What I've got here is a flax spinning wheel. Now the main difference between a wool wheel and a flax wheel is it has this addition here, which is called a distaff. And the distaff is on my left. What I'm doing is I'm spinning the flax. The actual spinning is very similar to the film on spinning with wool. The main difference is, again, you're spinning it in the opposite direction to wool. Now, what I have to do before I begin is to wet my hands. And it's really best to have a cup of water. Some people have little cups that they hang from the spinning wheel. But just a cup of water that you can keep your hands wet as you work. Now, the reason for that is that the fibre contains a sort of gummy substance and that, by wetting it slightly, it makes it smoother and stronger. When you're spinning, keep your right hand on the yarn and pull gently with the fibres. Now, good, good flax should have a long fibre and with your left hand, you're basically keeping the rest of the fibres in place. And through a bit of practice, you get to be able to spin a very fine yarn of thread. 
bed indeed. Now it's at this point that we could maybe look at the fibre itself, that you're looking at a strip of flax, a strip of flax, and now it's linen yarn. So that's where the flax turns into linen. And that's how to spin flax. I'm going to show you in this film just how to look after your spinning wheel and make it most efficient. Simple equipment you'll need, some oil and a piece of paper. What we need to do First of all, let's look at all the key components of the spinning wheel and, and essentially anything that has metal on puts some oil in and it's just a tiny amount. And what you need the paper for is, is basically just to stop the oil from dripping on to the floor. Now, what we're doing is just a tiny drop just in each of the parts and just try and squeeze it down in between the sides of the wheel here. And then we move down to the floor here. And finally, just in where the bobbin is here and here. So once you've oiled your wheel, just give it a wee pedal to make sure everything is running okay. And that's it. Try and do it on a fairly regular basis. Try and get used to just carrying a little oil with you and just giving it a wee touch now and again. And that's how to maintain a spinning wheel. In this film, I'm going to show you how to make a prodder, which is really useful in rag rug making. This is the finished product and we can make this very simply. The equipment we need is a simple dolly clothes peg and a pair of scissors. To make the, the prodder, what we have to do is just carefully open out your scissors, insert the scissors into the clothes peg, right to the edge and give it a good twist so it's gonna break. And you're effectively removing one of the legs of the clothes peg. The next stage, is to open out your scissors and take the clothes peg and just start whittling down the side of the peg. So you don't need a very sharp knife. You just have to be careful, obviously, when you're doing this. And for the younger children, um, adults can help out with this. And the wood is fairly soft, so it's fairly easy to do. And all you're trying to achieve is a blunt point. And you don't have to be too specific about it. Just remember to keep whittling the peg down until you've got a blunt point, like so. And then you're ready to use your prodder. And that's how to make a prodder. In this film, I'm going to show you how to make up the warp threads. That's the threads that run up and down the way in cloth. And for this, you'll need a frame with pegs and you'll need your yarn. What I have here is a professional warping frame, but you don't have to have anything as large as this. Um, it doesn't have to be as technical as this, it could just be pegs put into the grass, it could be pegs put onto a wall, around a door, but essentially you do need something that's going, that you can attach your warp threads to that will enable you to make a good stretch from one side to the other. I'm going to show you how to, to begin. Essentially from the top peg, Tie it onto the top peg and then go over the next peg and under the one after that. With the fourth one down, you're then going to go round and take the yarn right across and zigzag for the length that you need. When you've got the length you need, 
then you're going to go over the next peg, under and round. The next stage is to come up the way and you'll notice this bit here where you're making a figure of eight. To follow on, you're just going back exactly the same route as you did before. If you make a mistake, you must go back and rectify it. Don't carry on, just go back and change and rectify your mistake. Go back up to the top. Now this time, you're going to go the opposite direction. You're going to go over and under and up to the top. I'm going to wind this round here to finish and break it off. And that's two threads on. You can see there's the figure of eight. You would repeat this backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards for the required number of threads. Just to reaffirm the key points of making up a warp, begin at the top, over, under and round, zigzag across for the required length, and over, under and round and back up. Remember to make the figure of eight. And to finish off, just a few turns around the top and break off the yarn. And that's how to make a warp. I'm going to show you the most ancient form of spinning and that's spinning using a drop spindle. This is the drop spindle and in the past what it would be would just be a weight with a stick with a hook or even just a notch in the top here. But this is the most common form of drop spindle and it's widely available on the internet. To begin the spinning, the important thing is the hook on the end and all you would do is just attach it to a bundle of fleece, like so. And then just spin and you see the, the tension you're creating. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going to very basically draw this out and in a moment I'm going to show you the technique of how to hold the fleece properly. But if you just practice first of all in spinning the spindle. Now that you've got your hook attached to the, the fleece, the important thing is just learning how to hold the fleece and the spindle. And you'll notice that what I've done is I've just taken a bundle of fleece and I've put it over the back of my hand. You don't want too much, just enough so that it rests comfortably. We're now going to twist the spindle. Now the spindle is providing the tension and as it stops spinning, you have to release your right hand and twist it again. But at the same time, with your left, you're holding the fleece firmly between your thumb and your index finger. And you're essentially just pulling it with your right hand, just slightly, allowing the spindle to drop, but to keep it twisting. And what you're doing is you're putting the twist into the yarn and you're actually making the wool. When you've done a length, it's then time to wind it on to the drop spindle itself. To begin with, we have to break it off the hook and just create a wee bit tension and wind it round and just tie a knot, just very simply. And run the thread up and twist it round the hook a couple of times. And that's really important because that'll hold everything in place. The next stage, return the fleece over your left hand and then just start spinning. Just drawing it out and you'll notice it's 
going down. Add another wee twist. And you would learn how much to twist. And stop and wind it on. To wind it on, just release and then twist. Remember to wind it round the hook a couple of times again. And that's you ready. And just carry on. When you're beginning to learn to spin, it's quite common that the spinning wheel is going to drop. That's what, you know, it's it's called a drop spindle for a, for a purpose in a way. But um, I'm going to show you now how to join it on. So you've got your fleece and you've got your separate piece of yarn. Break a wee bit off and spread out the fibres like that. And then just simply Put it on to the top of your bundle of fleece and hold it between your finger and thumb and spin again. But make sure there's a good bit of tension there, a lot of twists put in so that you can then draw it out again with a wee bit of the fleece. And you have to do this, this bit fairly carefully but then once you've joined it on, you can just keep going. And that's how to spin using a drop spindle. In this film, I'd like to tell you how to set up this traditional loom. This loom is over 200 years old and every aspect of the setup of this loom is the way that the weavers would have worked in the past. What you see here are the threads that run up and down the way. This is the back of the loom, or the back beam of the loom, and you'll see that the threads are spread out along here. Now there are 880 threads from here to here, so that gives you some indication of how fine it is. And each of the individual threads have been made up on the warping board, and the previous film showed the, how to make up the threads on the warping board. With reference to the warping board, you'll notice here that there are two sticks. Now, when I was making up the threads, I was making a figure of eight. And you can see closely, if I open it out, you can see that there is a figure of eight where threads go under and over and over and under. Can you see that? And that's the most important piece in the loom at the moment is the figure of eight and the function of that is so that with these two sticks put in either side of the figure of eight it means that I can pick out the threads in exactly the order that I put them on. For instance we've got eight threads of brown, four threads of red, eight threads of brown and so on and each thread is in order. So these two sticks at the setup stage are the most important parts of the loom. I'm going to explain the path of the warp threads through the loom. We'll begin from the back of the loom, where all the threads are spread out across the back beam. We then travel under and over these two sticks. The threads are then passed through these four shafts each containing hundreds of heddles. They're just like the eye of a needle. And each thread is passed through in a particular order. I'm now sitting at the front of the loom and you can see these are the four shafts with the threads coming through the heddles. The threads then pass through the reed, which is encased in the beater. And each of these threads is passed through a space in the reed. And that's one of the most important parts of the, the loom. And what that is, you're spreading out the threads to the exact width that you want. Threads are then taken from the reed and pulled right through and tied on to the front beam. The final stage is to tie up the foot pedals to the lambs which are in the middle of the loom and the lambs to the shafts at the top. 
And that means that when I put my foot down on a foot pedal, it's raising up two shafts and it's making a space for the shuttle to go through. Each foot pedal is tied to different shafts and each foot pedal is pressed in a particular sequence, just depending on the pattern you want. And eventually, when it's all set up, it will be really smooth running. Quite a bit of time can be spent in adjusting the loom to make sure that you're able to work smoothly and efficiently. And that's how to set up a traditional loom. This type of loom is a traditional loom. It's over 200 years old and is typical of the types of looms that were in Scotland um, in the 18th century. Every aspect of the weaving has been done by hand. The setup of the loom requires the most amount of accuracy. And you'll notice from the back of the loom, everything is straight down. And that is actually down to the calculation of the yarn. In other words, everything is worked out on paper first. Once you've got your loom set up, you're then ready to weave. The foot pedals are connected to lambs, which are underneath the loom, and the lambs are connected to the shafts, so that when I put my foot on the foot pedal, it's raising up different shafts. Each foot pedal is raising up different shafts. Now, when you're comfortable with how this is all set up and how the strings all lie and everything is balanced, then you're ready to start weaving. The weaving is done using the picking stick and this is the thing that fires the shuttle from one end to the other. So going back to the beginning where I put my foot on the foot pedal, what's happening also is it's making a space for the shuttle to fly through. The space is obvious to the weaver at the front. To take the shuttle through the space, all we have to do is pull the stick and beat down the yarn. Change foot pedal, fly it back, beat it down. And again, beat down, and again. And if you're working on a basic twill weave, which most tartans are, then it's just a repeat of that pattern. And what I'll do is I'll just continue to weave at the, a normal speed for a weaver. Passing the shuttle backwards and forwards, you just continue to do in a set routine pattern until you have the desired length that you want. And that's how to use a traditional loom. In this film, I'm going to show you how to fill a shuttle. And for this, you'll need the shuttle itself and the perns. Now, these perns have already been filled. This is an empty pern here. Now, when I'm weaving this piece of tartan, I'm using four colours. So I'm using four different shuttles. And you see that I've already filled three of them and I'm going to show you how to fill the fourth. So we have the pern. Now if I put this into the shuttle itself, you might find that it's very loose. Put a bit of paper in it and that will help to tighten it. Press down as hard as you can and make sure the that the pern is in there firmly. This thread has to come through the shuttle and out the other end and then is wound round and comes through here. I'm going to show you how to put the pern inside the shuttle. Now the pern is pushed in firmly into the shuttle. The next stage is to thread it through and for this you need a good blunt end so it's useful to just Snip the end of the yarn and just take it through one end of the 
the hole in the shuttle and just take it out the other and then take it over and feed it through. Every shuttle is different but you'll soon learn your, how to thread your own shuttle but for this loom that's how to do it and that's how to fill a shuttle. In this film I'm going to show you how to weave using a flying shuttle and for the purposes of this film I'm actually going to use an empty shuttle. Now this shuttle goes into the loom here. This is the flying shuttle mechanism. Basically it's a picking stick. Now one throw of the shuttle is a pick, so a picking stick. Bits of string, bits of wood, bits of wool that operate a spring mechanism. So where we maybe have an image of weaving as something going under over, under over, the purpose of this loom is to quicken up that process entirely. And so rather than the weaver under over, under over, what's going to happen is the shuttle is fired through the loom backwards and forwards. To operate the flying shuttle mechanism, we have to use our feet as well as our hands. So by pressing down the foot pedal, what's happening is a space is being made for the shuttle to fly through. And the way that it gets from this side to that side is by flicking the stick like that. If there was yarn in the shuttle, you would then beat that down and push it back and change to the next foot pedal and you'll notice how the, another two have come up and you throw it back, sit down, press the next foot, foot pedal, beat it down and last foot pedal and the rest is a repeat of that and through experience you just get to be able to go faster and I'll just give you a wee example of the standard speed that the weaver would be working at. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a loom. And this type of loom is widely available to most people and can be bought from the internet. This is an ideal loom for weaving all sorts of different types of fabrics. It can weave the very basic type of fabric right through to much more complicated pieces and it just depends on the number of shafts you have and the number of foot pedals you have as to how technical you want to be. This could have eight shafts and it could have 16 foot pedals but for weaving tartans um, and basic cloth then you really, the maximum you would really need would be four shafts and four foot pedals. This is the back beam here and the warp threads are wound around the back beam. This is a very narrow piece that I'm working on just now, but you see the width of the loom itself. So this is ideal for, for weaving a metre's width of cloth if that's what you would like to do. After the warp has been wound around the back beam, it comes over the back and you see that we've got four shafts here and each thread is passed through what are called heddles. Now this is an empty heddle here and if I open this out here you'll be able to see more clearly the heddle threaded. So one thread is passed through one heddle. Each thread is passed through a heddle in a particular order and that would depend on the pattern that you want to make. In this case most tartan is a twill weave. The threads have come from the back beam through the heddles and we're now passing the threads through the reed which is encased in the beater. Now the reed is made of metal and each thread is passed through one space in the metal. 
Then the threads are taken through, wound around the front and on to the front beam. And they're tied in groups evenly along. And the idea is to pull as, as tightly as possible and keep the threads as even as possible when you're setting it up. And the more even you do it, the better your warp will be. In this video, I'm going to show you how to weave on a loom. And I've already got the loom set up. I'm going to show you how to put the threads going across the way, the weft threads. And this is where you can be as creative as you want to be. But this loom is also able to be used to weave things like tartan. For more information on how to set up the loom, please watch my video on how to set up the loom. I'm going to show you how to use this loom and how to use the shuttle. First, we'll look at the shuttle and you'll see it's a very basic stick just with grooves cut out the end, but really anything that enables you to wind your yarn around. To make the loom work, I have to use the foot pedals and it makes a space and you'll see, just make the space wide enough so that the shuttle goes through cleanly. Take it through at the widest point, that's the bit closest to the reed. Take it through, reach up and beat down fairly firmly and push back. I'm going to do the second shot, which is the return shot. So remove your foot from the foot pedal, move on to the next foot pedal, push down which raises a different two shafts, but it still creates the same space. Take the shuttle and bring it back. Reach up and beat down, push it back. The third foot pedal is the same. Beat down. And the final one, if you find you're running out of yarn, take a little bit off and beat down. And those four shots make up what's called the twill weave, which is the most basic form of weaving. And the rest is really just a repeat of that. And that's how to weave on this loom.